Hello everyone and welcome back to more Seduce Me the Otome. Oh my god, we are back for like the eighth time I think. Is this the eighth time? Yeah, I'm pretty sure there was, if I read correctly, there was like nine characters to romance. Yeah, there was. Okay, so I was right. So yeah, we're back for the eighth time because in the last episode, we had finished uh, Suzu's route. And we had romanced her and in the end of it all, we basically, well... She's still basically associated with the mob, but like she's trying to make do and make like you know like make the best of it. And then she comes over to our house, and then she's like, "I want you to meet my parents," and that's how it basically ends. So we're back again because we still have yet to romance everybody in this game that is romanceable, and we are back for Naomi this time because that was the listed order I was gonna go in. I was gonna go in, yeah. So after Suzu goes Naomi. So now we're back here again because um, Suzu and Naomi's route, if you wanted to pursue them, obviously starts around in the beginning stages of the game. So our one of the first choices that we make to pursue Naomi was this one, which is the same as Suzu's because they are best friends, best friends for now. But yeah, it's just choose whichever uh, between the two companies' name. And obviously, last time I chose uh, the Dragon Company twice, once on my first round, and the second time it was for Suzu's route. And we already know what happens then. But I, th I think for the majority of the this this route or Naomi's route, it's gonna be new, everything new, because I don't think I've ever leaned towards any of her answers, like once. Actually no, maybe that one time where like Suzu was being a bit of like um a meanie to like uh Lizette's gang or something and like I don't know, I can't remember. I, I swear to god I took Naomi's side in that in that one instance, but then afterwards the rest was just like yeah, it leaned more towards a neutral route or like Suzu's answer. So let's get started without further ado, we will choose the Trinity Corporation this time instead of the Dragon Company for our little project. Blah, fine. Be lame. Ah, uh, shut up. Alright, now that we've decided on a name, now what? I don't know. Can I skip? As we ended our name game, a giggle scam scrambled my thoughts. Okay, so that's all there is to that answer, which is like, wow, it's pretty like, short. So we're gonna skip on ahead. Skip, and then here is the second part where uh, we, where Suzu jetted out like crazy after this, as soon as the bell rang, and then Naomi was just like, wow, like you don't have to be that fast to like get out of the classroom that like so eagerly. So uh, last time, obviously, I I said I wish I was as fast as getting as uh, as her getting out of here. And now this time we're gonna say me and you both, Naomi. She gave me a smile as if relieved by the fact that I felt the same way as she did. See, why can't she just be normal like the two of us? Uh huh. Well, whatever. Boring. It's Suzu and Naomi. Think about it. Very true. <laughs> huh. Okay. Man, you guys are slow. Are you coming or what? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So we're gonna head to the cafeteria this time, and I think Naomi. Yeah. Okay. What? Yes. Obvious answer. What Naomi was having to. A tuna sandwich sounds pretty good right now, anyway. And that's basically it. So we're gonna skip a shit ton of stuff. We skipped a shit ton of stuff, which consists of all the events leading up to the point where her grandpa passed away, we attended the funeral, we had the argument with our dad, and we came back to school, and I think Lizette, this is the situation I was talking about where Lizette was bullying us or was, like, making snarky comments about, I think, I, I'm starting to remember now, like, I think it was about her grandpa passing away and how, like, her, her sympathy and, like, her condolences are really fake because she's a fake person herself, and we decided to let it, that go because she's not even worth the energy. We agreed with, now, I swear I agreed with Naomi this T like last time the first time I, the first time I did this this whole entire gameplay so but anyways we're gonna say Naomi's right Suzu oh, I man. swear come on oh yeah I did I did so yeah see she knows about proper public taste yeah 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 I know how to be a lady Sheesh. okay uh, guys, I'm going out to school. Oh yeah, so this is the part where she has to, where Hannah has to go and head off into the mansion and get our ass dropped off, and that's where we meet the guys. Okay, so we skipped a crap ton of stuff here. Blah, blah, blah. So we met the guys. We they ha they made us dinner, and we also uh what? Are, oh yeah, we were. This is the, up to the point where we were planning for the housewarming party, and yeah, like last time with Suzu's route, instead of staying around the house to help out with the guys, we ended up going out with our 
friends. And instead of leaning more towards Suzu's answers and stuff like that, obviously we're gonna go towards more Naomi's like, like wow, answers and shit. So this is the part where she we were talking about spicy foods. And I think, I swear I did this answer as well because I was like, hell no, am I, like, you crazy for eating peppers for less chips. So... You never eat spicy things, Anderson. You don't know how it feels. And I think, yeah, I already chose this answer in my first Let's Play, so you guys can refer back to that video, like I said. But Suzu looks for some answers, but I'm pretty sure, like I said, the majority of, of Naomi's right here is going to be really different because I've... Never, I didn't tend, I didn't lean towards her answers all that much on like any of the occasions. So, instead of going to the arcade, which was Suzu's route, we're gonna go to the cafe this time for Naomi. So let's go to the cafe. Ooh, we only ever saw the cafe when Damien had that flashback where they first came into the real world, and it turns out that Kay was in on this too. Spoiler alert. <laughs> We hit the mall and walked around a bit, but as we planned before driving over to the Pink Lady Cafe, it was a small home-style cafe with a lot of pink. Yeah, hence Pink Lady. And when I say a lot of pink, I mean a lot of pink. Yeah, literally everything is pink except for the flowers. The flowers aren't pink. They're orange. Oh, hey, is this K? Oh my god, this we actually get to see K this time because I was like, who the fuck is K? The cafe was crowded, but we definitely caught Kay's attention as we walked in. Hello. Hey, girls. Hey. Oh my gosh, I'm so happy to see you. Have a seat. I'll be with you in a minute, okay? Hey, girl. Hey. Hey, girl. Hey, girl. <laughs> oh my god. And there she is, as busy as usual. Okay, cool. Told you we should have gone to the arcade first. That's all good. Naomi glared at Suzu who, before leading us to a table to sit at. Suzu sat across from me as Naomi sat, by, sat to my side. After a couple seconds of settling into our seats, Kay slid into the empty fourth seat with a smile. So, how's everything been? Great, but how exactly- Okay, so we met Kay in person, like, we, don't, we know how she looks like now, but I still don't understand how, like, what relation we have with her. Crazy. Life's always crazy with you. <laughs> But I can tell Suzu's not happy to be here. That kind of breaks my heart, you know. Oh, is she just like a really good friend? Is she, is she, she's nobody's aunt, right? <laughs> I was like thinking, he was like, is she Naomi's aunt or something like that? I don't even know. But anyways, I guess we just frequent this cafe so much that we eventually just made friends with her. <laughs> <laughs> Suzu smirked and gently punched Kay in the shoulder, making Kay laugh. Naomi and I chuckled at the sight. Kay and Suzu were like sisters, wild and crazy. However, Kay didn't have any known relatives, so it was always nice to see her connect with Suzu. Oh. How about you, Naomi? Have you figured out your problems? What problems? No, and now's not the time to talk about them, Kay. I wanna know, I'm nosy. Huh? <laughs> Naomi keeping secrets from us? That's a first. I wanna know, <laughs> tell me. She holds more than secrets, I'll tell you that much. I bet she likes me. <laughs> she secretly you guys? has- Yeah, you secretly have feelings for me, it's no secret. Don't worry about it, Naomi. I, you can tell us on your own time. Naomi stared at me briefly before smiling in relief and happiness. Thanks. No problem. Kay giggled as Suzu rolled her eyes and groaned. Eventually, the four of us just started to chat and talk about random events that happened to us. I decided to not speak about the boys and just focused on school. Truly though, it was relaxing to feel somewhat human again without thinking about Incubi or anything of that sort. Simple young, adults prob simple young adult problems were already enough for me for me to handle. Oh yes, student debt. Oh yes, future plans. Oh yes, job. <laughs> Taxes. <laughs> the economy. We eventually lost track of time and wound up staying longer than we expected, making us unable to stop at the arcade before going home to dress for the housewarming party. Kay, as much as she wanted to come, had other plans but, she, but wished, us, wished us the best. Okay, so we're gonna go back to the housewarming party, but we're gonna skip all that because we all know what's, ha what's gonna happen. Okay, so we skipped a crap ton of stuff, like I said before, where Malik showed up after the housewarming party happened. We woke up the next day really early on. I went back to the off to the office again and found the book of spells, and then we didn't disturb the guys. We went back to our room to eat, and that leads us to this choice here, like I've mentioned before and like we've all seen before. So, but obviously, instead of going to the arcade or any of the other choices, we are obviously going to go back to the Pink Lady Cafe, and obviously, we're going to find Naomi there. If not, I'd be pretty pissed. 
Had arrived at the cafe, ready to relax. I don't. I didn't want to be stuck at home on a Sunday. Besides, the cafe always had something new to drink, no matter how often you came. Cool, that's great. I entered the double doors and looked around. Not many people were in, and Kay didn't seem to be working today. Oh, okay. Oh well, she can't always be working. Yeah. I'll Oh, I thought she would be the owner of the cafe or something. Oh, well, whatever. <laughs> I made my way to the pastry bar and took a look at what the cafe had to offer that day. There was always something new now. Mat there was always something new now. Uh, no matter <laughs> when you came, which is what kept people coming, myself included. Ha, typo. As I browsed the, del the delights, my mouth began to water. I had just eaten earlier, but the cafe pastries always look good enough to tease your appetite back into a hungry state. Both the smell and the look of the look of each dessert was carefully crafted to appease. You didn't regret buying one and biting into it. Yay. I like pastries too. I finally made a selection and headed to the cash register to purchase my treat. But I'm gonna spot Naomi in one of the tables, I feel. What can I get for you? Oh, hey. Hello, Lily. Hi, I'll take a couple of chocolate and raspberry macaroons. Macarons. <laughs> and a pink lady latte, please. Coming right up. Thank you. Well, that sounds actually good. Like, I, I really want some, like, macarons now. <laughs> Lily was Kay's assistant who mainly stuck to the cafe's finances and computer work. However, when Kay wasn't in, Lily took over becoming the face behind the cash register who gave you what you needed. Oh, okay, cool. But macarons are hella expensive, though. Like, for boxes of 12, only 12 is like what, like 25 bucks, 20 dollars? That's still expensive. Lily, where's Kay? Kay had to fly out to New York suddenly. She said it has something to do with delivering something special to someone. I'm not too clear on the details. Oh really? Some secrets? Does it have anything to do with demon magic, huh? Some relics? I don't even know. <laughs> uh, okay, sounds like fun. Wish I could go to New York. Uh. Don't we all? Here you are. Enjoy. Thanks. I took my order to a far corner table and got comfy. The pink lady latte was a cafe special that every was a cafe special that everyone adored. Oh, what the fuck? Okay, whatever. It was a normal latte with oh the pink lady latte. I was like the pink lady cafe latte. You know what? They sound the same shit. Okay, I got confused. Let's try that again. The pink lady latte was a cafe special that everyone adored. It was a normal latte with a very subtle raspberry flavor. The foam was pink too. I can ima I would imagine. Before I could indulge, however, a voice stopped me. Oh, hey! Yep, hello. I knew you'd be here. I looked up to see Naomi enter the cafe with a smile towards me. I smiled back, not expecting to see her. Ha, that's what you think, Hana. <laughs> hey, Naomi. Mind if I join you? No, I don't mind. Not at all. Naomi nodded before quickly getting herself a coffee cake slice and a latte and joining my table. I've been wanting to try their latte for a while. Is it any good? It's pink for crying out loud. I like it. It's nice. It has a nice raspberry flavor. Why did you get it then? <laughs> Why did you get it if you don't even know what it tastes like? God. Well, there's no problem with that, Hannah. Jesus, I guess if it's new and she's never tried it before, obviously she'd get one. God. Okay, whatever. We're gonna say. <laughs> We're gonna be nice to her. Now we gently blew over her latte to cool it before sipping it, smiling at the taste. Mmm, this does taste good. I'll have to get this from now on. The raspberry is a really nice compliment with the coffee. Oh, yeah. That would that would sound nice, actually. I, I giggled. Naomi loved food when it wasn't made in the school cafeteria. She wanted to own a restaurant one day, but always focused on studying the business side. Naomi had natural cooking skills that made grandmothers seem like novices at making you amazing food. Oh, really? That good? You should be. You should get macarons next time with it. The raspberry macarons definitely bring out the flavor in the latte. Even more raspberries. I should. But they're hella expensive. Naomi slowly grew a look of thought on her face as she stared into her latte, probably thinking about food again. I think about food all the time. It was during these moments that I got to see a simpler, almost beautiful side of Naomi. She was sm she was very smart. She was very smart, smarter than me. However, she always held seriousness very close to passion, dedicating her heart to her dream. It was enviable. Yes, I sipped my latte and ate a macaron before speaking and breaking her thoughts. Thanks, by the way, for coming to my impromptu party. I know it was last minute and all. Naomi broke away from looking at her drink to look to looking up at me in surprise, but then with a smile. It was my pleasure, really. I mean, our pleasure. 
Suzu came too, and all. <laughs> <laughs> nice cover up. Naomi blushed a bit before clearing her throat and taking a sip of her latte. She then looked at me again with a slight frown. What? But hey, how are you holding up from that? I'm sure meeting all those business people was tiring. Yeah, I'm hella tired. Hey, it wasn't anything I couldn't handle. It was just the sudden it was just the suddenness of it that tired me out, yeah. Well, I'm sure you did great. It was a great party. The food was amazing. That's great. It was amazing, yes. I slowly began to remember the party, remembering how I felt alone throughout it. I wanted to be with my friends, but I had to put on my business air and impress my guests and my father. Oh. Did I try too hard? I was supposed to be it was supposed to be a simple party, but it felt like a job interview. Yeah. <laughs> well, it might as well be. Before I go before I got too deep into my thought in my thoughts, I felt a hand gently cover mine. I refocused my thoughts to reality, seeing Naomi gently holding my hand. Hello. Hey, I know that look. You're about to overthink it. Don't. You did great. I'm sure of it. Thanks, Naomi. I stared at Naomi unsurprised that she caught onto my thoughts and happy to know that she cared. Thanks, Naomi. You're such a good friend. <laughs> Naomi smiled and blushed, giving a small nod. She was absolutely adorable when she smiled like that. I didn't know. I didn't know how, but her smile was was able to make the room lighter. Cause her smile is like a hundred watt light bulb. <laughs> Naomi then pulled her hand away, placing it back on her latte with her other hand and cupping the mug and st and sipping her and sipped her drink. Naomi licked her lips and let out a sigh. This is really nice. A relaxing Sunday afternoon at a cafe. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's nice. It's almost like a date. What? <laughs> what kind of guys are those? God. Okay, fine. You want me to do it? I'll do it. It's almost like a date. <laughs> All of a sudden, Naomi's face turned pink as she looked at me. Confused, I tilted my head and gave her a quizzical look. Naomi, are you right? You're turning red. <laughs> Naomi must have snapped out of her trance. She fanned herself and tried to calm down from whatever was on her mind. <laughs> uh, oh, no, no, I'm fine. Really. Just a little warm, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> God, Naomi brought her latte up to her mouth and began to drink, practically chug it down. It was practically, it was actually cu kind of cute how flustered she got from a simple statement. I giggled quietly to myself before sipping on my latte. Naomi and I eventually lost track of time and, went, and we would and wound up chatting until the late afternoon when the cafe wasn't ho wasn't hopping. Lily would join us and we'd talk about silly things like TV shows or movies. Oh, wow. It's getting late. I gotta get home or my mom will flip. Okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> would you like a ride home? Yes, sure. <laughs> that would be great, thanks. We quickly headed out with Naomi driving me home. It was nice to be alone with her rather than have the ex to have the explosive Suzu around. I prefer Naomi's calm logic anyway. Oh, really? That's kind of mean to say to Suzu. <laughs> okay, so that was that. That was our little, like, date with Naomi in the cafe. Impromptu date. And uh, I think this is the part where we get kidnapped. So I'm just gonna skip on ahead. Anyways, we skipped on ahead. We got kidnapped. We ended up fighting back. And also, we... After getting kidnapped, uh, oh yeah, because we fought back and we didn't require any of the guys' help that obviously left, Diana shows up, threatens us to like take our memories, we ended up giving it to her anyways because obviously we, we, it wouldn't make sense otherwise, we're not pursuing any of the guys, we have no reason to hang on to them. So yeah, and we are here back again with the part where we wake up, we're all like really chill and shit, and then... Instead of either Suzu or Andrew texting us about the whole events of yesterday, or the previous day, we are going to get a text from Naomi, I'm pretty sure. So I looked to my phone and saw a text I must have completely forgotten about. Naomi asked if I was okay. If I was okay, what did she mean? Did something happen yesterday? Nah, of course not. I tried to remember, but for some reason, yesterday's events seemed blurry and almost blank. I remember going to school, dealing with Lizette, and going home. I don't remember, however, what exactly went on. Whatever. I must have been, or else I wouldn't be safe at home. I rubbed my head, trying to shake out exhaustion. Damn studying. I sighed and texted back. Sorry, I forgot to text you back. Everything is fine. See you when you get here. So, we... Yep, we're gonna go to school with, the, with them. And we are here in school, and instead of noticing something strange about Suzu, where she was, like, really spaced out of it, I'm pretty sure, yeah gonna be Naomi this time. So Naomi seemed to be very tense, focused on her desk more, th more so than usual. I was almost tempted to poke her and see what was wrong. 
my phone though vibrated in my pocket. Thank God I set it to vi set it on vibrate before class. So okay, Susie's gonna be the one to be like, "Yo, what's up with Naomi?" <laughs> I pulled out my phone and checked it, seeing a text from Suzu. I began to text back, suddenly going into a text conversation. Dude, what's up with Naomi? Like hell I know. I don't know. <laughs> Man, I hope everything's alright with her. This isn't like her at all. Yeah. Same here. I looked over once again at Naomi. She was intensely scribbling in her notebook, almost obsessively so. The grip on her new looking purple pencil was almost tight enough to bend at each joke she made with it. What By do you the way. Kay kind of let me in on what's going on with Naomi. Really? And not? And you totally left me out on it? What? Rude. What's going on with her? Apparently, Naomi's got a crush on someone. Like, a huge crush. She's been to the cafe to see Kay multiple times since the beginning of the school year. I bet it's me! <laughs> I bet it's me. Really? I couldn't believe it was Naomi having romance troubles. I looked over once more. See, something made my heart slightly skip seeing her again. I was worried, yes, but for some reason I felt a little angry. Don't worry, girl, she probably likes you. Who did Naomi have a crush on? Why was she so nervous about it? Why couldn't she tell me? Because it's me. <laughs> I put my phone back into my pocket, ending the conversation. Hopefully Naomi would explain things to me soon. I was almost abnormally curious about her, her and him, this mysterious crush. Time continued until the end of the class period in, the, in that exact status. Naomi held her tense ground, focusing on nothing but the incoherent, scribble, incoherent scribbles on her paper, while Suzu and I watched on in worry and not caring for the class we were in. As the bell rang, Naomi stood up suddenly. Uh, I need to go. See you in economics. No, girl, you need to talk to me. Ah, where are you going? And for the first time ever, Naomi was the first person out of the door. What just happened? I have no idea, but I'm going to go see. I don't know. Leave her alone, chase after her. We're gonna chase after her. I needed to see what was wrong. Naomi was important to me and I needed to help her. I instantly grabbed my my things and rushed out of the room. Whoa! Anderson! Hey! Hold on, I'ma be right there. Be right back. I was I wasn't listening, I need to get to Naomi. What empty costume have you gotten yourself into, Naomi? Are you punching desks as well? The hall was full of students which made spotting Naomi a little harder. I wish I was a I was just a little taller. <laughs> Naomi, Naomi. I began to push through the crowd, trying to find a trace of her, her hair, her shirt, anything. I managed to get a glimpse of her. I managed to get a glimpse of her white bow, instinctively following it down the hall into a classroom. Naomi's class was the other way. Where was she going? I continued following and peeked into the classroom, seeing no one else in there except Naomi. What shocked me was seeing Naomi standing over an empty desk, whimpering and almost sobbing. I didn't know what to do. The world. Behind me in the hall went into slow motion as I stared at Naomi's back. She obviously wanted to be alone, but I wanted to help her and fix whatever was bothering her. We're gonna help her! I couldn't leave her like this. I quietly stepped into the room and closed the door, making Naomi flinch and freeze up. Naomi? Naomi? Hello? Naomi gasped before turning to me. A shocked expression on her face. Tears had painted her cheeks, which made my heart sink in my chest. Well, at least you're not... Abusing it at a desk. A poor, poor desk. Naomi, what's wrong? Uh, it's nothing. Nothing. I... Are you sure? Naomi quickly rubbed her eyes and face, trying to cover her face and clean it of sadness. I pressed my lips together, not believing her. Naomi, talk to me. You were acting strange in history. I was just listening to the lecture. No, you weren't. You were scribbling in your notebook. I was watching almost the entire class period. I have bad handwriting. That's a straight up bullshit lie right there. No, she didn't. She had the most precise and elegant handwriting I had ever seen. Duh. Was she, why was she lying to me? What was going on? What was making her so distraught? Naomi, whatever is troubling you, let me help you. You can't help me, okay? Uh, rude. I was, yeah, I can't. How, now, how do you know that? Huh? How do you know that? I stepped back, feeling the sudden anger in her voice. She covered her mouth, regretting what came out of it, and stared almost in pure fright at me. Naomi, God, is it your feelings towards me? I understand. Everybody gets all, like, stumbly and, like, nervous around me. I get it. <laughs> I stepped towards her, not wanting to scare her, but wanting to be close to her. Naomi didn't seem affected, so I continued to walk towards her. Eventually, we were only a desk away from each other. Tell me. Naomi stared before letting out a shuddering sigh, nodding in defeat. I slowly took a seat in the desk in front of me, watching as she moved to stand in front of it. I've been... having some issues... Okay. Okay. What? Can you care to tell me what kind of issues you're having? Oh, issues. What issue? What about? Yeah, then you know, you involved in the mafia too? <laughs> well, I mean, it's not an issue, but I mean, it's hard 
to describe. Uh, okay. Uh, is someone bothering you? Are you getting bullied? Are you involved with the mob? In a way. Really? Uh, is someone bullying you? No. No. <laughs> Does someone have a crush on you? No, I have a crush on them and I don't realize it because it's you and I know that. Come well, on. actually, it's the opposite. I know that already. Susie told me. <laughs> you have a crush on someone, yes. Yeah, but I... I don't know how to handle it. I mean, I used to believe I liked only guys, but all of a sudden I had these feelings. So I went to Kay, but she only listened and told me to just go along with it. But I don't know how to, I mean... It's all good, it's love, you just let it happen. You have a crush on a girl, that's, yeah, and that girl's me, I'm not surprised. That's not bad, is it? I'm the one who always wanted to talk about guys. It's all good. <laughs> no way, you can like whoever you want to like, exactly. But, what if I liked someone who was really close to me? Mm, it shouldn't matter. <laughs> My mind instantly went to Suzu. Did Naomi like her? There was no way. No, Hana, she likes you, God. Then again, maybe Suzu's rebellious personality interested Naomi enough to like her after all these years. It wouldn't be impossible. Uh. Yeah, I somehow felt a little jealous. Naomi likes Suzu. How could that be? No, she likes you, God. I had to stop. This wasn't helping Naomi. I needed to help her feel better beyond anything else. So what? If you like someone close to you, that makes the feeling that much more powerful. Who knows? Maybe she likes you back. Naomi stared at me with a look up I almost couldn't understand. It seemed strange, but it was almost loving. What if the person I like is you? Yeah, I, I already know that. <laughs> I felt like I was dreaming. What? She likes me? Huh? When? How? Since forever ago. Naomi looked down at the desk, her face turning red. I've liked you for a while now. I mean, well... I've liked you since last year. I was really not sure about how I felt though until last semester when I started seeing Kay. That's nice. She told me that what I was feeling was normal, even though I kind of thought I'd always go for men. I mean, not that I have anything against people who aren't straight, but like... I get it, girl. God. Naomi whimpered as she fumbled over her words. I found it adorable, but I couldn't help but stare in surprise at her. She likes me? Why not? Why wouldn't she like me? <laughs> Gently, Naomi took one of my hands and brought it to her lips, closing her eyes to breathe against... To breathe... Eh. Closing her eyes to breathe before looking back at me. I like you. I really do. Okay? Okay. <laughs> I felt my heart flutter and flattery. Naomi, one of my best friends, liked me. I wasn't sure what to say. Naomi's face was almost as red as a tomato, but she continued to hold my hand, wanting to say, wanting me to say something. She was a patient woman. I guess the confession really got her nerves up, out because she, because now she was calm and seemed relaxed. That's great. What could I say to her though? You want to say that you love her back? This is a huge deal for both her and me. She had, she had been one of my best friends for the majority of my life, and here she was confessing to having a crush on me. I, it was surreal, yet it made me feel both strange and fluffy. Naomi smiled and gently lowered her, lowered my hand. I watched as she let out a relaxed sigh. I feel so much better after saying that. Thank you. Ah, no problem. <laughs> I couldn't help but stare at Naomi longer. Was she, was she not expecting me to say anything in return? A sentence bubbled in my stomach, forcing itself out of my mouth without filter. <laughs> I'm glad you feel better. <laughs> That'd be so mean of me. Go out with me, obviously. God, I did not know what came over me. I, I let it spill out. I liked her though, I liked her a lot. She was adorable and cute in her own special way. I loved that she was an individual and stayed true to herself no matter what Suzu or I did. Sure, she was a little ditzy, but, I, that, but that added to the charm. Naomi stared wide at me, blushing as red as could be. I was positive that if she blushed anymore, she would faint from all the blood rushing into her cheeks to color them that red. D did you just- Yeah, I just did it. Yeah, I did. <laughs> I stood up gently, took Naomi. I stood. I stood and gently took Naomi's hand. I needed to know. I needed her to know how I felt. She poured her feelings out to me. It was more than fair to share mine with her. I really liked you too. You're adorable, and I love that about you. You're kind and sophisticated, and you have this sort of charm. Naomi, will you go out with me? Naomi was completely red in the face, but her eyes started to water. Rogue tears dri dripped from the edges of her eyes as she smiled at me. Yes. Yes, I will! Yay! <laughs> Naomi rushed around the, at the desk, separating us, and hugged me tightly. I held, to her, I held her to me and smiled. I felt a small part of my heart filled with pure joy. I felt happy like nothing was going to stand in my way with Naomi to help me. Yay. Okay, so basically, months went by since Naomi's confession. We were happy, and eventually graduation came along. It just... 
this complete this whole dialogue is basically the same thing where like she graduated her dad is proud of her and you know she gets she got to do her own shit now and then Angie took over the CEO company, and she, you know Naomi's there to support her the entire way. So I'm just gonna skip this entire dialogue until Diana shows up, or probably even o- skip over that too, because I'm pretty sure Diana's gonna show up, and she's gonna be like, "Well, I did what I did, and you know I'm happy that you got something out of it. Now I'm just gonna fucking steal you, steal a kiss from you, and then be on my way." And that's I'm pretty sure that's how it's played out. And I'm just gonna stop until the point where it's like Naomi probably shows up at our house again to do something. Okay, so we are here again, Diana showed up, and also I kind of skipped over some of the dialogue that was a little bit different, which was Naomi and the Pink Lady Cafe. I, I feel like, I even though I skimmed over, I think it was the fact that Naomi ended up working there, I don't know, I don't know. It was something similar along the lines of Suzu working for her family casino, but anyways, you get the point. Uh, I let my mind wander to my future before my phone started ringing, I instantly picked it up. Hello, is this Naomi? Hey, can I come over? Yeah, I figure. Okay, yeah, sure. Yeah, sure, what's up? I just need to talk to you. Okay. Okay, I'll see you in a bit. I grew worried what was wrong. Did something happen? My mind began to sort through the possibilities that could have occurred in Naomi. She sounded pretty happy, so I don't think anything's, like, happening. Soon enough, I heard Naomi's car pull up into the gate. I rushed to the front doors and opened, it th- and opened them to see Naomi looking at me with a gigantic happy smile. See, I told you. Guess what happened? What? Are you opening up your own restaurant? Wait, guess what? Just guess! Okay. Uh, alright, alright, home. Did you get transferred up a level in a, in class? Nope. Well, uh, alright, did you win something? In a way. Okay. Uh, before I knew it, Nami was holding up a ticket that had the word Paris printed across it in bold letters. Oh, sweet! We're gonna go to Paris! Guess who's going to Paris for summer before sophomore year! That's... Good! Yay! Paris? Oh wow, that's awesome! <laughs> I smiled seeing how happy Naomi was. She and I both knew that France was a great place to learn about cafes, second only to Italy. However, I felt my heart grow heavy. She was going to Paris. Nah, you're gonna go with her! She got two tickets, didn't she? Yeah. The date across the date across the top noted that the trip was in three days and would last the entire summer. She and I talked about going together as kind of an international date of sorts. She was going to go alone. Huh? I know that look on your face. What's wrong? You're gonna leave me! (laughs) We'll be in a long-distance relationship. Naomi stared at me blankly before looking into her hands. She then started to giggle before laughing almost hysterically. Huh, what's so funny? (laughs) I'm sorry, I didn't show you. There are two tickets! (laughs) Naomi gently moved her fingers, revealing a second ticket behind hers. I gasped and stared at She smiled wisely at me. (laughs) Yeah, figures. We both can go. Sweet! I felt my heart lift from its heavy feeling as I stared at the second ticket. I quickly rushed to Naomi and hugged her, kissing her. She was shocked, but I felt, but as I felt her relax in my arms, she kissed me back. I didn't want to wake up if this was indeed a dream. I felt light as a feather, not wanting to ever let go of this woman in my arms. There were no words that could describe the emotions within me. I felt joy, happiness, ecstatic, high all at once. Here I was, holding the woman I wanted to be with like nothing else mattered. I vowed to cherish her and love her with the remainder of my days and beyond. And that was my happily ever after. Yay! And Naomi's love, woo! And we got an achievement, yay! That means that we completed another ro- like the second second last romanceable character, and the last one is obviously gonna be Diana because that's all that's left. So yeah, that was basically how that played out with Naomi's route. It was cute. We get to go to Paris together. Awesome. And yeah, that's basically it for this episode, so tune in next time for the conclusion of romancing all the characters. And then we're not exactly done with that yet because I said I would check out um, all the other bonus materials and such and that. And yeah, that was that's actually what's basically left of this game. And I, I also, I think... It's been it was a while back, but I, I saw on the page of like the game that there was like an after story for Sam, I think it was. I I'm I might play that too, just so that it's cause it's like the whole package deal is like, you know, seduce me the game kind of thing. It's part of that line. So I will I will play that just to see what's up with that. And then yeah, I guess we can finally conclude the series. And yeah, that's that's that that's all. <laughs> that's that's it. So yeah, I guess to see you guys next time then for Diana's route. Bye!